All right, Precision Opinions Live. And my name is Christian Stella, Farm D from Precision Compounding Pharmacy. And this is our web show, Precision Opinions Live. This is actually probably the second time we're doing a Zoom, which is really nice. It's nice to get everyone involved doing Zoom and, and have, uh, have people from Connecticut join us, which is awesome. Um, so today we have two very, very special guests. I have the, the community of the RSDSA. So RSDSA is actually the supporting community for CRPS, which is um, other known as RSD. So this is um, a, a disease that is terrible. Um, we know that. And um, today here, I have Nurse Beth, who is Beth Seckel. And I also have Jim Brooks. Now, Nurse Beth, tell you right now, nurse, now she has became a registered advocate volunteer leader. And I have Jim Brooks, who social worker and now the executive vice president of the organization. So this is really nice. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure, Christian. Thank you. Christian, before we begin, I just want to look in the background. Are you a Red Sox fan? <laughs> you called me. So, all right. So, we have a division called Pro Scripts, and we deal with a lot of the MLB teams. So, Red Sox is, is one of our accounts. Guilty. So, <laughs> I, no, I'm a big Red Sox fan in Connecticut. So, what, it's a 60 40 split, and we're on the, the underdog here. There you go. All right, good. Well, um, definitely, definitely want to keep you out of New York, you know, on, on some of those. Days. But um, yeah. all right, so I just want to dive right in, kind of. And Jim, if if you, I'm gonna kind of bounce questions mm -hmm. off, or Beth, Jim, let's let's go for it. So Jim, how, you know what? Let's umbrella it. Let's define. CRPS, if you guys could, for the viewers, just explain exactly what it is, what the condition is, what are all these letters? Yep, Beth, go right ahead, because you are our, our number one advocate, please. I'm the living person with CRPS, which stands for Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. Um, when I was first diagnosed, they actually called it RSD. That was the former name, Reflex Sympathetic Dystrophy. Um, but uniquely, it's been around since the 17th century, and no one knows about it. I didn't know about it. We didn't learn about it in nursing school, and it's not taught in medical schools. It's had so many different names over the years, um, and because it's one of 7,000 rare disorders, um, unfortunately, rare disorders are just not discussed or um, you know, well represented in medical and nursing schools. So unless you um, as a practitioner, take a vested interest in it, you're never going to know. Um, I had no idea until I was diagnosed with it 14 years ago. I'm, I, I just had no idea what this was. Um, it's a conglomeration of sensory abnormalities, but disproportionate sensory abnormalities, not regular abnormalities. They're just so wacky that you really do feel a little crazy. Um, and autonomic dysfunction. So one of my great examples with sensory abnormalities, I remember going to the doctor and I knew this syndrome was neuropathic. I, I knew it was because I could feel electrical currents and pins and needles. And, and um, But when I took a shower, now imagine going to the doctor, yeah. I, I took a shower and my unaffected side felt fine. But when I had my left side, my affected side hit the shower, it was like shards of glass were cutting me. And you, you're in the shower thinking, oh my God, am I losing my mind? Because, you know, the other side feels totally normal. How can you go to a doctor and say, you know, I'm having this weird neuropathic pain, but it feels, the water feels like shards of glass. Wow. I mean, it makes you feel just a little bit crazy. Wow. And a lot of patients go to a bunch of different physicians but before they actually find out they have this, correct? 
Yes. It's, a, it's a journey. We did an online study with Johns Hopkins and even today, people may go to five different physicians before they get a diagnosis. And then too often they'll say, just look it up on the internet and, and hopefully they'll find us and then we could help them get on the path to remission and hopefully recovery. Okay. Now, Christian, I think it's, it's amazing syndrome that it's the first, it's the only medical entity with the, the word complex as its first word. Yeah, you don't see that all. No. 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 Is it's not a disease of the limb. And unfortunately, there's still practitioners out there that will say to patients, you can't have it internal organs. It's just a disease of the limb. And that is just not true. You can right. have it in GI, cardiovascular, urology. It can be anywhere systemically. Wow. Now it's brought on by injury, correct? Well, you could be a minor or a major or an unknown. So a minor could be like a sprained ankle, you know, not a big deal. You never expect it to have this neuropathic pain from a sprained ankle, um, a, a blood stick, a splinter. I mean, something really, you know, not um, intense. Or mine came from uh, a slip and fall at work and I tore my ACL. So in surgery, something happened, whatever it was, and that's how I developed mine. But it can happen from people who have a, an MI, um, from stroke, it can be uh, another simple one is immobilization. Just being immobile for a long period of time can cause this disruption in your nervous and immune system. Wow, it's it's fascinating. The the, the how how something could an, an actual injury can create a disorder like this. It, it, it's mind-blowing. And it's interesting to know, Christian, not to cut you off, it's just after my ACL healed, I yeah. still had all this incredible neuropathic pain. So even after your injury, be it minor or major heals, you still have this disproportionate neuropathic pain. When I was at, um, when I was at the walk, and that's something that I want to discuss uh, that you guys put on, have a great community. Everyone with CRPS gets together and um, they, you guys put on a walk every year. I was at the, at the walk and I was talking to the patients and, and kind of getting their background story. One of them actually, it was a gunshot wound. Yes, right. It, it, it's amazing that from a gunshot wound, they come out and they have this nerve condition that's disoriented all over the body. So it's, it's wild, it really is. In, in the United States, it was first seen in, in soldiers returning from the war. And Cyrus William Mitchell, who is the father of American neurology, he coined the term kazalgia, which in, in Greek is burning pain. And they would come and their wounds had healed and they had this tremendous pain. And back then they would use morphine salts and, and they would put their hand in ice water to try to quell this, this pain. And, and sadly, you know, 170 years later, we're still using sometimes morphine to try to attack this. Yeah. And it might not be the first medicine of, of choice. And that's where the, the, the orange color comes from, correct? The fire. Exactly, yes. Mm. All right, Jim, explain to me kind of your background. Um, I know you've been at this for 20 years. You've been in this organization. C can you explain why and, and what you do for the organization? Okay, so, so basically I was lucky enough to be between jobs 20 years ago and Abby Myers, who was the founder of National Organization organization of rare disorders got a phone call and our organization rsdsa was going from a volunteer-led organization the davises um, had run the organization for so many years and they, they were burned out so so they were looking for a an ex a professional executive and i was lucky enough to apply for the job and i got it my background is i'm a social worker and i'd always work for not-for-profits e either for youth services and Prior to that, I had been doing, um, working for the Obsessive Compulsive Foundation. And, and Christian, just like so many others, when I was hired for the job, I had to Google it. I had never heard what this was. And I reached out and started talking to people and I, and I just was, I'm, I'm still on a learning curve. And it's just amazing and that to be, have a job where my job is to really help people. 
and to find those resources across the world, and especially in the United States, to get people on the road to recovery. And Beth and I have been working hand in hand for perhaps seven years. Mm -hmm. She called me up one time, and I was lucky enough to to, to help her. And and we've been uh, together since then. So just just to finish up. So basically, what we try to do is is to educate, support, and most of all, give hope to people because so often people have they're just lost. And then and Beth was injured at work and. And what happens too is workers' comp is is not a kind system to chronic illness. (laughs) (laughs) It is. That was almost a gunshot (laughs) wound. Yeah. So so we try try to help them. We try to find doctor support groups um, and to um, fund research. And we're right now we've we've funded over two million dollars in research, but there's been no breakthrough. And the, the treatments, as I mentioned before, that we used in the Civil War are, are still being used. And there's not one medicine that's indicated for the treatment of this condition. And it's sad, very sad. Although we should, we should point out that RSDSA is supporting um, the bipartisan legislation of the STAT Act right now, that was, right, the STAT Act. Yes. Um, and it was uh, from Senator uh, Kobach, how do you say your name? I'm going to say it. I'm going to mispronounce it. Kob- Kobachar? In the Senate. Yeah. And um, it's to actually access and speed up the process so that medications that are already approved for other diseases can be used in the rare community. So, for example, we don't have one, like Jim said, one medication or treatment that's FDA approved just for CRPS. Oh, yeah. So insurance can either decide to pay or say it's off label and we're not paying. Yeah, like something like gabapentin. Right. Any any sort of medication that's used, being used for nerve pain, Lyrica should have CRPS as an indication just so it can go through insurance. That, and it's probably so, so hard for patients to go through this affording bills um, for medications and care and, and without a, a good background and a good community. And that's another point that I wanted to bring up. Um, I keep on mentioning the walk. And, and when I was there, I had such a nice feeling of community. Like everyone was involved. People knew each other. Like, oh, you need to talk to this one because this one went through that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's involved. And then um, I started doing more research on your organization. And it looks like you guys do have some sort of support groups um and and one of the patients sends out cards right um yes yes yes. carolyn's cards cards. so can you explain that community and what it's like to be involved with that right when i first started learning about how people felt so isolated was when we would do our in-person conferences christian we would always ask in the beginning how many people have ever met someone else with the syndrome and too often one third to one half of the audience had never met anyone and so it, because it is a rare rare syndrome and so more and more that we we just we did walks for fundraising, but also for awareness and bringing together. And so often people will meet and bond, and bond together and they'll be friends forever. And, and like Beth, when I sometimes have a difficult case and sometimes it's difficult for me to talk to someone because I don't have the, the syndrome, I will go to someone with the syndrome to talk about that and, and how they get through the day. And, and it's easy for me to say all things will pass, but it's, No, it's very difficult. And part of the war, Christian, to to add on, and the conferences before COVID, when we had in-person conferences, they're Mm. not just for patients and not just for practitioners, they're for both. And I found that interesting because either practitioners wanted to be vested, become vested more in the condition and really learn, but I think it was great for patients like Jim said many times, never spoke to another person who had it, to actually see practitioners there that are trying to learn, even medical students. One mm-hmm. of our books, we always try to have medical students there um, because that's who's going to be treating us in the future. And if they're not learning it in school, 
um, we have to introduce them somehow. And Jim and I actually did a presentation to one of the local medical schools at Hofstra. We did a little presentation on um, RPS and they just absorb, you know, when you're young and you're learning all these things, you just want to absorb it all. And that's the time to get them. Yeah, like a big sponge, you know? Yeah. There you go. Right, yeah. And, and I always give the medical professionals uh, somewhat of a, a, a pass because you, as Beth mentioned, there's, there's 7,000 rare diseases. And, and so often in part of the treatment is, is remobilization and, and functional restoration. So people have to get moving again. And so often physical therapists have never really been taught how to help someone with CPS because you mentioned the allodynia, the, this hypersensitivity to touch. So often people are so afraid to go to a therapist because so often restarting the whole recovery is painful. Mm. And so, you. Yes. I haven't worn a sock and shoe in 14 years. So now imagine you're at physical therapy, like you know, Jim said, and they're touching you. You can't even stand your own skin. Nevertheless, have somebody touch you. And that's the education part, which I think is crucial going onto your website, seeing everything is, is lined up, what you need to know about the condition, even for practitioners. And yes. there's, certain, there's certain doctors that know about it. There's certain doctors that are learning, but um, your organization is so nice because these physicians can get a chance to learn. Not, not everyone has, has heard of it. I, I, when I got involved, I didn't know what it was. You know? Exactly. I think that the problem with uh, the American medical system, especially with rare diseases, is so often you see one practitioner. And, uh, you know, to, to quote Hillary, you know, it takes a village for people to get better with CRPS. And we're talking about uh, a physician, perhaps a pharmacist, a compounding pharmacist. Uh, we're talking about physical or occupational therapist, a pain psychologist, because what happens, Christian, is people's lives are ripped apart and that CRPS is the highest level of pain. It's greater than amputation of a digit or childbirth. It is living hell. And all of a sudden you have this, you've never heard of it before, and you go in from doctor to doctor, and someone all of a sudden wants to put a spinal cord stimulator into you with, without having been, treating the, uh, been treated with a less invasive uh, treatment first. So it, it's so it's so important that what you're doing today to educate practitioners uh, about the multidisciplinary care, especially when somebody Googles, they get the diagnosis and they Google the number one thing that pops up is it the number one suicide disease. Yes. Can you imagine there is this horrific neuropathic pain, horrific. Like you, you know, when you hit your funny bone, I don't know why they call it that. Can you imagine that? <laughs> in your whole body all the time yeah. and lights and no noise you're in the car vibrations are painful uh, wind that will go across your leg feels like a machete is cutting you i mean i have to tell at the beginning the problem that with it is it's called really the invisible disease because clinically i mean i have acl repair you can see that but there was nothing else to see it was all subjective of what i was saying that uh, eventually I had goosebumps on just one leg. Now I know I have this, but I can't make that happen, you know? But there were no discolorations in my leg at the beginning. There wasn't a whole lot of swelling or sweating at the beginning. It was, I felt it, I totally felt it. But when you go to a practitioner and you say, I feel like I'm burning up, like I have third degree burns and I'm being electrocuted. I mean, I'm a practitioner. I don't see anything, there's no diagnostic to say, well, this validates it. So it becomes a diagnosis of exclusion. It's very hard to tolerate this while you're traveling, trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with you. Right. It's, it's, and to hear it, to hear it from someone like you, you know, firsthand, uh, I, I cannot even imagine. Um, so, you do have certain things and you call it your toolbox. I like that. I like that term because I use that for my personal life. You know, I have a toolbox. Um, I have a toolbox of, of things I do when I get upset, you know, think, things I need to do to maneuver. I love that term. Um, so you have a toolbox. It, 
what does it contain and, and are, are there certain tricks or tips you want to throw out there? Well, everyone should have a toolbox related to whatever it is you're going through. A marriage toolbox. I mean, there's a whole uh, reading <laughs> children toolbox. I mean, there's a toolbox for everything. Um, and my toolbox of things that I need for change over the years. Um, what I needed at the beginning was just finding Jim. I'll be honest with you. I spent seven years in my house. I couldn't travel. I couldn't go anywhere but to a doctor's appointment because the vibrations were so painful. By the time you get to the doctor, I couldn't even think to articulate what was wrong with me. I just wanted to go home. Um, and so finding RSDSA and Jim was in my toolbox and it will always be in my toolbox. That was Thank you. Really was. I remember how refreshing it was to, to go to the first conference in New Jersey. I'll never forget it with my husband, who's not medical. And I don't think he really totally appreciated what I was feeling. He knew I was in pain, but he didn't really appreciate it until he was there and saw all these other people and practitioners. And he looked at the slides and he goes, I remember there was a picture that Dr. Getson was doing the presentation and it was Lavinia reticularis. So you can, that's the term, and you get modeling on your body parts, which I get it on my belly. And I had a lot of pain in that. And he goes, honey, your stomach is up on that. So the toolbox included my husband starting to learn about what CRPS is. Um, at the beginning, I had a neurologist in my toolbox because I needed him to document that I did have a nerve injury. Um, so I have CRPS type two, but as the years sp it spread, as the years went on, so I have CRPS type one, meaning without a documented nerve injury on my other extremities. So then I needed a PT person um, to help me get through. I, I don't need the PT person anymore, so that's not in my toolbox. Um, it's going to sound ridiculous, but I had to get room darkening shades and curtains because when I'm flaring, I need a dark room dark sunglasses on and everyone in my family knows if you see me in the dark room with dark sunglasses you better not come near me <laughs> like crazy um and other there'll be other tricks about you know what you need in your your toolbox when you travel i never thought traveling would ever be possible ever again um and i'm glad to say now it is possible but you have to be able to get your toolkit to help you manage your day-to-day -day life before you can even envision traveling, um, whether it's national or international. I mean, I went to Rome and I never thought I'd ever be able to do it. And I did do it in a wheelchair. It wasn't the way I wanted to do it, but I did it. There you and go. Then, you know, you keep learning yourself. Like with, with RSDSA is very good about teaching practitioners and patients about what CRPS is and the central sensitization. I really had to understand from a physiological point of view, what is happening in my brain because my injury is healed. So I should not have any more pain from that. Mm -hmm. But then I understood about what's happening with that and what medications would work. And, and part of my toolkit now includes ketamine infusions which is not covered by insurance, but that saved my life and actually reset my NMDA receptors. I could feel it, totally feel it. And so as long as I do it monthly now, I, I'm much more functional. On top of the low-dose naltrexone that I get from your compounding pharmacy and my ketamine trochies from your compounding pharmacy. So as you learn what CRPS is, you can bring in different things into your toolkit. Oh, yeah. now, isn't yours diluted somehow, your LDN? Didn't you do that at one point? No, I'm still on. No, but I'm saying, is it diluted? Did, didn't you, um, in the beginning, that you weren't responding to the oral? Oh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I, you know, most doctors don't know about low-dose naltrexone. Right. And when you mention the word, all they know, which is all I knew, was naltrexone. And I went, what? I don't need naltrexone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need naltrexone because it's used in the hospitals at higher doses for you know uh, IV drug abusers and alcoholics. So when I first heard it, I went, "What?" But, but finding out that it has such great neuro 
inflammatory properties in a low dose. And it's used for so many different kinds of conditions. So they gave me a capsule from a, a pharmacy, but they started me at like 3.5 milligrams. I did not do well on that at all. And then we kept lowering it to one milligram and I still didn't do well on it. And it turned out that I called the pharmacist and I said, listen, I'm a nurse. Does this come in a different consistency besides a capsule? Because I know the capsule is a benign cellulose and it shouldn't bother me, but it's bothering me. And that's how I came across the suspension. Yes. It was much easier for me to start at super low doses, like 0.05, which I know wasn't going to help. But I would take it with a Zofran because it made me so nauseous. But I was so determined to get on a good dose of low dose naltrexone to calm down that glia cell. I was so determined. And so a lot of times when Jim and I talk to patients, they'll say, oh, I tried low dose naltrexone and I didn't do well. And then my first question is, was it a capsule? Was it a suspension? Like you, you have, and it takes- it's You know more about low dose naltrexone than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use it. So it, and a lot, I can't take it all at once either. I cannot tolerate it. But my thought is, as long as I get in a certain amount during the day, taking it BID twice a day, what's the difference? Hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and it, it's, that's the advantage of using a compounding pharmacy is you can make any sort of preparation. With low-dose naltrexone, today I had a patient that had malabsorption. They weren't mm -hmm. absorbing in the gut, so we made it into a sublingual under the tongue. Um, we do wow. a lot of tablets to make it affordable for patients because that, that drops the price down it becomes for 90 tablets which is a three-month supply it's it's forty dollars so it's affordable it's like it's a copay yeah, exactly at that point. Yeah. yeah and this is something that's essential like you said calming down the glials it hits the opioid receptor causing mm -hmm. a negative feedback yeah. in orphans um per nurse beth you you could be a pharmacist you, oh, you, know, <laughs> you know the challenge with it is it, it takes time for a low dose naltrexone to really kick in and start working so it's very very difficult when you have all this neuropathic pain and disproportionate allodynia to tolerate that journey it took me almost a year to get to get on one and a half milligrams bid a year is a long time, but I understood why it was so important. So I kept pursuing it. But the average person who doesn't understand that, you just want a quick fix. Of course. Christian, last, last night we had a presentation on ketamine and the, the physician talked about that he, he uses it in a lot of different ways, but he also talked about the ketamine uh, cream. And do you, do you make that at your pharmacy? Yes, we do. So very, very popular for CRPS is a formula um, in in-house, we call it the P221, but it's really just ketamine 15% with lidocaine 15%. And lidocaine is a sodium channel blocker, just helps in yes. that area, ketamine and MDA, but it's great topically for those areas. Let's just say you're having a, a uh, outbreak and you're having some nerve pain in, in uh, random spots of your body, you could physically apply it to that area without getting the systemic effects. So you're not getting the side effects, but that one, that is very, very popular um, nowadays is to use a ketamine cream, of course. And, and is that, I know it's probably not covered by insurance, but is that somewhat affordable? Yeah, somewhat affordable. So for here, um, what we do is for 60 grams, two ounces, $39. And then okay. for four ounces, it's sixty nine dollars. So it it's a four, it's definitely affordable. A patient could go through four ounces in two months. So sixty nine dollars okay. over two months, not 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 so bad. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's so interesting when you think about the invasive treatments of a spinal cord stimulator being forty to seventy thousand dollars, and we're talking about a compounded cream. Oh, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So listen, I, I want everyone to know exactly where to find you guys. How do they find you guys? What do you offer to patients out there? Because we have patients in the network that have CRPS. So how do they reach out to you guys? Yes, I'm coughing, so please. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> My number's already, Jamie. Um, there's a toll-free number. 877-662-7737. Um, you can also email at info 
at rsds.org. You can go online. There's a lot of letters, so we'll have to print that out for you. Um, www.rsds.org. Um, we're on uh, Twitter, although Nurse Bet's not on Twitter, but we're on the Twitter. Um, we're on Facebook at RSDSA. Um, we're on Instagram and Pinterest. Okay, great. And it's free to join online, which I would really recommend to join online. Um, we have a newsletters that come out. Now we have a rare edition of newsletters, which is really great your doctor and try to help. Um, we do Facebook live presentations because of the pandemic, we were not able to do the, you know, the in-person, um, but that's really helpful to most CRP, our CRPS patients who are bedridden like I was for a long time. That's great. And we have a lot of educational materials that I always carry with me. Um, there's guidelines for the hospital um, guidelines for the emergency room and guidelines for going to the dentist with CRPS. Major problem. Yes. Um, Chrissy, the other thing, I'm sorry, Beth, the other thing we have is that we have a free accredited course that's on our website. And we also have a postcard that we're trying to have individuals CRPS give to their practitioners. Oh, and that would be perfect um, for the practitioners just so they can get a nice um, form of education. Exactly. So, um, so I appreciate you guys coming on and, and on my end, if anyone has any questions about CRPS, I do have the brochures in house. I can give you the information. I keep it handy with me all the time. Um, so nurse Beth, Jim, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. You guys didn't have to do this. Um, wow. you guys are, are godsend. Seriously, you're, you're out there. Beth, you're, you're a warrior, and Jim, you're just as much as a warrior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Christian, you. take care. Thank nice. you so much. Hello, this is Christian Stella from Precision Opinions Live. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our social media links. You can reach us by email at compounding at precisionpharmacy.net or our phone number 516-785-4774 extension 2 for compounding thank you very much thanks for viewing